Well, speaking of ACDC and their uh, longevity, you guys are uh, similar to them, it's kind of tour titans. You guys have been on the road for quite a while, and you're going back on the road to Europe, right? That's where it's all starting. So maybe Tuan will bring his uh, wife as a new fan to the European tour. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yep. That's right. Hey, wh- where, 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 where are you at? And what's your name, Antonio? Ant- <laughs> Anthony, I'm I'm up in uh, Maine, the great yeah. state of Maine, northeast. Yep. I mean, I mean, there's one of you. It, one of you guys looks like you're in a, uh, like you're in a a, a log cabin. That's bat. Nate. Oh, that's, that's Nate. Nate. Yep. And he is. You're absolutely right. <laughs> okay. Very appropriate for the interview. I'm on a toilet in a log cabin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like outhouse, and your balls are just swinging down there with the black. <laughs> Yeah, why not? <laughs> be care, yeah, be careful in there, Nate. I mean, you never know what's what's in that hole. Yeah. <laughs> I always stand in the hole. I don't understand the. <laughs> uh, yeah, Nate's Nate made his way back east. He typically lives in Southern California, but we're all from Maine, so he's he's back in the great state of Maine, you know, for the week and uh, up in up in the woods in an outhouse. Oh, uh, we just really pissed people off in Maine because we played in. Or no, in 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 uh, New Hampshire, we played in New Hampshire, and then we played in Vermont, and in both places I called them Maine. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Good, good, fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they had a very negative reaction to that. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's because they they have an inferiority complex. Maine is the better state. Oh my god, easy. <laughs> but I told them everybody knows the best the best maple syrup is made in Maine. <laughs> <laughs> that really pisses Vermont that, off. Yeah, Vermonters, <laughs> they're like no. No. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, going over to what the UK at the end of July, right? Yeah, yeah. Can't wait. The land of shitty food and ugly women. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gonna be great. I mean, you know, the, the British are a, a brutal, bloodthirsty people, and they always appreciate war. Nice. Uh, and they have for a long time. I mean, we've been going over there unfortunately we stopped so we kind of lost some momentum there uh after uh odorous passed uh but you know and it's one of those things where if you don't go and keep traveling then you they forget about you so now we're gonna let them know we exist again so over there obviously the fans you know you probably don't get over there as much as the u.s like i mean they obviously know what they're getting into at a guar show at this point um some of them do, but to be honest with you, like, like there's some places where, for instance, we're playing in Poland uh, on this trip. I mean, that's going to be a blast. And and it always is because anytime you play a Guar show in front of people who've never seen the band, uh, it, it's, it's a transcendent experience. I mean, because they just, you know, they lose their minds, especially someplace like that where they really legitimately don't know what to expect. Mm-hmm. And they see us roll out there and do what we do. And, you know, it's like somebody checks a box somewhere that says anything is permissible. You can do whatever the fuck you want while this band is on. Do they not have the internet there? Like, how do they not know what a guar <laughs> show is? Well, I don't think anybody knows what a guar show is when they're like, I mean, there's a big difference in looking at it on stage and standing in it, you know, um, yeah. literally and, standing in it. Yeah. Literally. In, and watching, watching how it all comes together and, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, I think that people, they know basically what to expect, but, uh, it's, it's still shocking. Um, and it's great also when we get to someplace where I mean, maybe the internet isn't that, you know, I mean, I guess it's all over the world that people have the internet, but, uh, somehow, sometimes we play places where people don't seem to know very much about the band, <clears throat> even now. And that's mm-hmm. pretty rude. So probably early on, you're dealing with more of that, right? I mean, whether it be fans coming to a show, maybe you're opening, or uh, a band you're out on tour with, and their their fans are like, what the fuck did we just get ourselves into? That must have happened a lot back then. Uh, oh, I lost you there for a second. Um, yeah, I mean, for sure, absolutely. Back then, uh, in the uh, late 80s, uh, throughout the 90s yeah i mean that was to be honest with you i mean that was the very best time to have been in war because for those very reasons you know and we were playing such small places i mean sandwich shops you know literally there's a club in uh i think it's in san antonio called taco land 
and uh, you know, Guar at Taco Land was just it's <laughs> legendary even in our own minds, right? Like we we we, we still remember back. I can't even imagine what the uh, like group of about forty or fifty Latin American migrant workers who were at the show must have thought. <laughs> uh, but you know, I mean, they, yeah, I mean, we were constantly running into that stuff. We'd go play at some place, and all of a sudden, like one time, there were all these guys who had had legs amputated for some reason in the audience, and all of a sudden, they just started throwing them up on stage. No so way. Yeah, we had a lot of severed, like amputee limbs up there. Um, I mean, oh, yeah, all kinds of insane stuff happening in this band. Plus, we used to take a lot of drugs and then go play. <laughs> so maybe I mean, none of that actually would, happened. You were just seeing the prosthetic yeah, hallucinations. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we did the very first time that I went to Seaguar, not as a member of the band, but as a uh, as a fan, which was probably the, the first or second. I think it was the second time the band ever played. Um they didn't have any songs. They just stood there holding the instruments and talking about how cool they were. <laughs> That's we what we do. That's what we do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we've modeled ourselves after you guys. Good. <laughs> yeah. What That's about on, on the, the prom- Oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, so that's why I'm on the toilet. <laughs> what about on the promotion side? Like, does a promoter, you ever get anyone that's like, shut this shit down? This, what the hell is this? Yeah, we have. I mean, not, I don't think we've ever had a promoter do that. Um, we've definitely had promoters who didn't understand what we were going to do. Right. Uh, approach us with a mop bucket. Yeah, you know, clean this up. Uh, and we were like, yeah, that's not how this works, man. Like, you know, <laughs> we're going to do these drugs and screw these chicks and we'll see it there. Right. Uh, but uh, that's <clears throat> pretty much, you know, so there is that. But we have had actual legal officials shut down shows on on more than one occasion. Um, uh, in particular, I guess the. The one that was most like what you're describing would be because it happened in uh, Charlotte, but that was very premeditated. Like they showed up with a whole bunch of police that were holding, you know, the shields and the bag. You had the guys who were sort of riot cops. And then you had the Barney Miller types that were coming up on stage. Um, so that was kind of an orchestrated thing. But uh in Athens, yeah, man, we Athens, Georgia, we played, and uh, the chief of police just, you know, he had some guys that were working there off duty as security, like they normally do, uh, cops do, uh, and they called him, and we're like, chief, you got to come down here and see this, right? So he comes down, and he looks at it, and he says, yeah, you're not doing that, not in this town, not no tonight, wow. and they just completely shut the show down, and people were just fucking pissed, man, and we wound up getting, I think we got 40 grand from the uh, ACLU. Um, yeah, the way we won that case and they wrote, they gave us a big, giant, a big giant check written to the Missing Children's Foundation. Wow. And we, we couldn't figure out where to cash it. <laughs> like massive, like you see, uh, you know, uh, Publishers. Publishers Clearinghouse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had to try to find a big bank. <laughs> Uh, that's amazing. Like an oversized bank. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Got to fit through the window. 